Do any of you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, perhaps for the musicians in Southeast Asia, particularly any forum that you want to ask us anything about music in the Roni fandom in Southeast Asia? For us. Alright, we're about to uh, uh, you published the album under what, Chris, Crystal Empire Records. Is it a legitimate one or is it like uh, just one that's just made up and it's not going to go any further? And if it is a legitimate one and that one that you plan to have future plans for, uh, are you planning on part-time in future artists? Uh, I'm not sure about part-time in future artists, but I think that part-time is something that you would have noticed also the you also have seen this a little bit at the bottom here. I'm sorry, first time you've got to look at the Christian and Pirate, these guys don't know much about him. <laughs> so I have to take this question. Uh, basically, it's a project that's being run to try to get more Brony musicians out of this region. So, what we're trying to be is a sort of a music label, a record label, to have musicians published a bit more. Because what, right now, what's happening is that I know a lot of musicians, I know a lot of people, I saw people know Zayer, who's Isaiah, who's on this album as well. He's got a lot of stuff on SoundCloud, but nothing really produced from it. He's got a lot of big works in progress, and a lot of musicians, I'm sure some of you can relate to it as well, you know. Lots of works in progress, and you know, half written songs, and things like that. It's some sort of like a push for musicians to get out and get into a, you know, not say a better place, a much more noticeable stage than just, you know, SoundCloud and YouTube. And um, of late, YouTube has just introduced a new system where they're trying to draw some musicians as well, which is, I don't know, pretty depressing for a lot of us, but we're hoping that this will you know, be used, especially in future conventions in this region, as you know that there are, the Tantra U is not the first convention in Southeast Asia. In fact, prior to this, there have been PH41 and PH41 2, which has both happened in Manila in the Philippines. Both of them also have albums for their respective conventions. And I'm hoping to keep this tradition alive through this project of Tantra Pirates. Uh, any questions for the rest of them? Um, New Sear Information has performed at Polycon AU, which is the Australian Polycon Convention. Uh, yeah, some of you may know that. Uh, Polycon Convention is this side of the world as well. It's not already really happening in the US. Any other questions? I might have asked about uh, the Temple in the Versailles album. No? Okay. If you ask anything, anything about the album, you can talk about it. You can ask us about you know, maybe how we produce music and things like that. I'll see what my favorite video game is. <laughs> yeah, please do. Okay. Alright, Alex, yes. You want to What's your favorite video game then? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Next. Alright, I'm just kidding. That's a pretty big question to ask. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Sorry? I did. He's a skater. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, that was oh, the turn. Okay, okay. Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Um, yeah, my, uh, my video game taste just goes all over the place. I play shooter strategies. Maybe I'm getting into Dota, which is kind of new. Dota! Dota! Yeah, Dota! Yeah, Dota in Singapore. Anyways, I think you can get fun like that. Dota! 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 Anyway, I've got a question I'd like to ask, which has been my hit for quite a while. Um, you guys have been musicians all the time, only picked it up after you know the fandom kind of convinced you. Um, anybody here wants to take this question? I think all of us should take this. Um, I kind of did music before I actually went to the band. So, yeah. Just like, <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a funny story with me because um, music's kind of been a really, really big part of my family, both on my mom and my dad's side. So I've been kind of on and off uh, ever since I was a little kid. You know, my dad tried to teach me to sing, play piano, all that jazz. Uh, speaking of jazz, that was pretty much all my dad was concerned about for the longest time until I started playing guitar and doing music about the book. Anyway, uh, it wasn't until the Brony fandom where I actually started taking things seriously. I can't remember exactly how it was. Um, but I will say to the Little Tunes, Stone, and Kurochi are both for approaching uh, me and wanting to do things with me. So they kind of like uh, helped me get into the community, helped me kind of get inspired. Uh, next comes to next. And the first thing that I did in the fandom was probably my couple of Nightmare Nights. 
Uh, and I did some of the class, my first original song, and I just kind of snowballed from there. And I just have to go, hey, I can record things. I don't completely suck. <laughs> so uh, that's a lesson for all you aspiring musicians. Um, as long as you know how to play an instrument, you don't completely suck. So go ahead, let's do it, man.
assumed that he was good as she's the one I got started watching. They just looked at me and he smiled. <laughs> He's 
His song is Fiji. He has three songs featured in this album. He's got a song to contribute as well. He's a very hardcore EDM musician. He's, it took him a long time to learn. And this kid, one story I need to share. He's really dedicated to the point that when he was young, he didn't have a laptop. So, I mean, he's still young. So, what happened is that, because his parents didn't get him a laptop, he, he really loved music. And the, the amount of dedication he put into getting his music done is very inspiring. Why? You used to see kids, in, after school, they'll be in a cyber cafe and they'll be playing Dota. Wow. Dota! And you walk into the cyber cafe, it's four school. It's just, it's just all over the place. And then you see this one kid at the back of the cyber cafe with huge headphones on. And on that cyber cafe computer, I kid you not, he's running FNL Studio learning how to use it. He did not, I mean, he did not let you know, a lack of facilities get in the way of his, uh, his love for music. He had, he had a pen drive that was just like that kind of thing, you know. He had all his softwares, all his VSTs, all his audio files, whatever, in an 8 gig pen drive that was just like. So, I guess I have some advice for you all here, you know, concerning music. I know that you know some people learn things more easily than others, but if you really love music and you want to get into it, don't let anything get in the way of you, you know what I mean? The first obstacle I think a lot of us on this panel can relate to is our parents. Our parents have something against us when we use it sometimes. Actually, my parents are not supporting me. They say, I saw my CD and this is that I don't care about my I know it's like this is this is like this. Yeah, that's not really support. Support is more like, yeah, you're doing music, okay, then buy your fancy computers, buy your life. It's more like that you do it. I mean, in some cases, some parents are like, you're doing music, that's not a career, that's not a choice. Music is an excellent hobby. It's something you all can keep up. And uh, if you all don't know how to rotate, you know, just probably can learn how to record. Nowadays, with this fancy website called YouTube, there are tutorials everywhere. You can learn any software in the world. You can learn anything from Microsoft Word up to the stuff they use in the UK laboratories in Europe on YouTube. So, you can find tutorials for anything online. So, uh, I don't see other questions. I'm sorry. Give me the question. Give me the question. Give me the question. Give me the question. Okay. My question is, why do some artists take longer than others? Like, uh, some artists can upload every month once a month, some artists can upload once a week, some like, once every year. Uh, there are a few reasons, right? Actually, I think I can think of two. One is, like me, I do a time, we already the only time that I work on music is that you get a friend, they are friends a lot. And I usually like, work like, I usually work on music like, 11 a.m. Get up here to like 4 a.m. and I sleep woke up seven times. And the second reason I think of is um, many people that use especially YouTube videos as well. What they do is they record all their stuff and they have it all ready. They don't make the name for themselves yet, but they have like this or stuff. And then once they have like a comfortable range, they start uploading once a once a week, once a week, once a week. Kind of cheating, but not really. Thank you. 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 Why don't you just talk about me? Because they actually get this free time in my life. I don't know how to do it, but they can actually do it. They have the time to do it. And good for them, I guess. Uh, it's such a. It's, again, it's, it's another really, really big question to ask because it's really so subjective. It's unique to the person. First off, who here has heard of the, the Living Tombstone? There you go. Big pop for Living Tombstone, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how, how close you followed him, but I remember at one point, late 2012, early 2013, that guy was a, uh, not 2012, 2011, that guy was a machine, like he just uploaded a new song every single week. If it wasn't about the police, it was about something else, it was about a lab bag, it was about a lab bag, yeah, it was a lab bag. That guy was insane, and it was actually really puzzling to me, because he was a close friend back at that time, and I was always asking him, you know, Dude, when, when are we going to play uh, Sega Sam ATF2 again? And uh, he would always give an answer like, I'm busy with uni, you know, I'm busy with my girlfriend or something like that. He, he, he would always be busy, but I would always see him upload a new song every single week. And I'm like, how is that? How do you do that? I'm sitting here with all the spare time in the world. I end up uploading one song every two, three, four, five months, one year. It's a fly of a finger. Last time that I heard something, and I just said yes. But um, we also have to look at music uh, in a much broader sense because 
Uh, nothing is that a more writing process. I've actually got stuff that I may have to half of the for over a year. Purely because I'm not happy with how the full product sounds. You have to see how the full product sounds. I have to express a set of yeses, all that jazz. On top of that, there's a little bit of 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 a Thank you. 
kind of uh, level. Uh, some people could say that acoustic music is probably harder to do purely because you have to go in there and record things and everything is kind of manual as opposed to picking things on a computer. But then you can also say that having to find the perfect sound on a computer is also difficult. So I guess uh, music that I would be older. It's all up to you what you think is um, better or any standard, but there are definitely different levels that you can look at it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really a question of preference. If you like one more, you know, it's something that you know, if something you like more doesn't mean the rest are good in that sense. But um, have you ever heard this question? What's the difference between best pony and favorite pony? <laughs> yeah, when you answer that question, you realize that just because there, just because there's a good. There's Best pony and favorite pony, there can be two different answers to it. So it's a question of preference. There is no best pony. Because if there was a best pony, it would be called my pony. Oh! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! So therefore, it's it's always what's your favorite, what you don't like. Some people really don't like it. You know, hate with a passion certain genres, you know? So yeah, it's really the dancer dance record. So uh, we'll just get a couple more questions, a couple more questions to the rapid stuff anymore. Any questions for the audience? Poje, how much swag do you have? How much swag do I have? Ah, swag! <laughs> Oh, I swear I have my swag on my dog, it's over. Uh, Jerome, give me the money. Daniel, go put your hand on this. Daniel. Uh, what is the aspect of the pony music that you like the most and the aspect that you like the least? I like the least is the easiest one, the self joking. Oh! 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 Lots of lots and lots of drama has come out of it, and I've unfortunately been looked into a lot of it. Um, just to name a few, I don't even know how I get looked into stuff like BronyCon 2012, which I was nowhere near. I, I think it would probably take about 30, 40 hours to fly over there. Um, but there's a lot, a lot of stuff where people and their egos thinking Brony music is a lot bigger than it really is. I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty big thing. But when, when you start letting your ego get to yourself, and um, I'm not going to name names or anything or bash anyone, but there have been instances where uh, people kind of take advantage of this uh, really, really big um, ego that they have, this really high up position they've got, and really take advantage of it and abuse their fans, their, their following, and everything. It's stuff like that that I really don't like, and they're not giving opportunities to small people who really want to make a name for themselves or really want to. Uh, get on to being inspired and doing this stuff. What I do love the most about uh, Brony music is the fact that I can write about how I have a massive thing for the hottest level boss of this planet. Oh, he's still back. He's still back. I'm not going to talk about it. Everyone wants the best. I mean, I'm not the best. I'm the best. You know, I'm not the best. I'm not the best. I'm not the best. That's why I really like it. And it's the only one in this position. Actually, let's do it for it. Oh, you don't like it? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and then you see like being stream, are you? Uh, I don't know if this happens in any kind of but like for like mainstream music, you see people trying to do better, outdo better. You get into Hollywood and you guys have to be very famous. You see people like, um, dare I say, dare I say the name Justin Bieber, who actually went from not very good, even in the world, and now he's probably in jail. So yeah, this is stuff like that happening outside, but like, if you go to the street, you see everyone like caring, like, oh yeah, I, I find that this part here is like really good, or I find that this part is not so good, uh, it's not so bad. You know, they give constructive criticism like, uh, instead of pressure, and that's why I really like it. Uh, okay, anything to say? One direction is also good. Only you have that one thing. One Direction song! Two of you are Oh, Slack Rebel! Oh! Oh! Okay. Everything about the Rolling Music Fandom. Slack Rebel! 